How y'all doing? Off the sky. I think that's about right. Issues. That should be right. Anyway. How y'all doing? Off the sky. Because I have both screens up and it don't matter. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll just like stick with that. <laughs> All, right, All right, back into the black gods, the introduction to the world's religions, and their black gods and predecessors, so on and so forth. Uh, I skipped a huge chunk because I just wanted to get to American junk, like all the Asian folklore. Interesting thing with Yahweh, though. I'm going to go ahead and read this right quick. Um, but I want to read the American, Aztec, Mayans, and all their guides. But just fun right now. Another popular term for God in the Old Testament is Yahweh. Y-H-W-H. yod heh vav Is not meant to be pronounced as Jehovah, nor is it pronounced Yahweh. These four letters known as the Tetragrammaton, which literally means four letters, are referred to as the infallible name, which means it could not be said. Even today, Orthodox Jews refuse to utter this name or write it. But why? Kitty cat! <laughs> Anybody want it? <laughs> I'm keeping that one. The rest of them don't. But it'll ask you, Larry, that's my homie. <laughs> Alright. But why? The, this unspeakable name contains a secret. The Hebrew letters of Yahweh. When from top to bottom represents the form of man. This is why the name was left unsaid. It's because these letters don't represent a phonetic word, but pictorial represent pictorial oh pictorially represent the reality of God like a hieroglyph. And these letters do not simply I'm sorry. And these letters do not simply why, why is that saying? I think the word is supposed to be supply. It says simply, but it's, I think it's supposed to be supply. So these letters do not supply the secret that God was man, but that he was a black man. These secrets are the subject of Judaism, esoteric and hidden tradition, which we know as the Kabbalah. In the doctrine and literature of the Kabbalah, which is the title of a book, the Doctrine and Literature of the Kabbalah. Author Edward Wyatt writes, that's a weird last name, W-A-I-T-E, so wait, whatever. As it is to the lesser continents that the name of the Tetragrammaton is attributed, it follows that the secret of the Zohar is the mystic utterance of the adept to the Recipendary? That's a weird word for me. Of the Egyptian mysteries. Osiris is a black god. Microphoris is, however, M I C R O P R O S O P U S. Is of the Manichean, but in but a more exalted concept. Uh meditating shadow between the infinite light and the feeble eyes of humanity a veil made in the likeness of humanity with which god himself deigns to cover his glory a shadow which contains the reason of all mysteries explaining the terrible deity of the prophets who threatens and inspires fear In other words, the secret of the Kabbalah is that the eminent 
God, the one who appears on earth called the lesser continents is the black God. This God waits, this God wait rights is not evil, but more exalted, but a more exalted concept. His blackness is the skin which God wraps himself in. It is a veil made in the likeness of humanity with which God himself deigns to cover. His glory, the blackness of his appearance, not only contains the reason of all mysteries, but also threatens and inspires fear in all those who do not understand why God would be so black. This brings us to the question of how the black God became associated with Satan. And y'all can guess that stuff. I'm not going to read all of it. But I did want to show the what they say about the hieroglyph. Isn't that a yod hey vibe hey? Coincidence? I don't know. Thought it was interesting. One more time for your mind. But as you see in my backdrop, all that junk here, there, <laughs> all that junk. That's what we're reading. Yeah. So skipping, skipping, and skipping. All right. Borrow a book from me, it's going to be pretty creased. <laughs> All right. Sorry, y'all wish I was more organized. I am not a professor. We just getting this done in my own comfort. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, in between time, I figure I drop an hour or so before I go to work. Probably won't even be an hour. All right. The gods of, Amer of the Americas. From the Omex to the Inuit. That's the header. <laughs> Several Indian nations, such as the Mayans, Aztecs, and Incas, worship black gods, along with their other deities and the Mayan religious religion particularly exemplifies the high esteem in which the Negroes were held. Harold G. Lawrence, The Crisis, 1962. Quotes for you. That ain't even my words, you know what I'm saying? In 1962, they had recognized that about Aztec and Mayan cultures. Or at least Hen Harold G. Lawrence, who wrote The Crisis. He agreed. Many Native American gods were black, Ranuko Rashidi explains. Other scientists have found a host of cultural parallels between ancient Africans and Native Americans, including architectural patterns and religious practices. As for the latter, some Native American communities worshipped black gods of great antiquity, such as Ekchua. Quetzalcoatl, which they tell us is white. Quetzalcoatl, Yalahua. I'm doing my best. <laughs> I should just spell them, but I'm just going to keep going. Nahuala Pele. That where Pele Pele comes from? Pele Pele? They just broke him down later and he became that, that other guy, but it wasn't originally. Nahuala Pele. And Zitiletek, such as Ekchua, I'm sorry, I just started over again. Long before the first enslaved Africans arrived in the New World, they were worshiping those guys, even though they tell you Quetzalcoatl was white. So, whatever. In this chapter, we'll explore the black gods of the America, the black gods of Mexico, the black Christ of Latin America. We ain't got to do that. Let's actually do Mayan gods. Yeah, they're just going to go into, you know, Black Jesus. You've heard it, Black Jesus. Ichua, the black star. And this is what he be looking like. Mm. See that big bottom lip? See the black skin under the red ochre? 
you know, they covered themselves with red ochre from time to time. So I'm pretty sure that's what that is supposed to be depicted in some way, shape, or form. All right. These guys were worshipped far and wide. For example, Ichua was the sixth most commonly depicted deity in the Mayan codexes, portrayed at least 40 times. We have the codexes here. Um, you gotta see which mouse is which. There we go. There we go. Y'all can see that one. So as you see, homeboy here got his thing on and popping. I think that's Ichua right there, but let me see. That's definitely Ichua right there. <laughs> Ichua, man. Oh, gotta go to this screen. Get this smaller. To see if they even wrote his name there, because that would be interesting. So, anyway. Back to it. <clears throat> That's Ichua. The black stuff. He is painted with he is painted black with thick lips. His name means black star. Ik means star, which is funny. L. So you are kind of in the same ballpark. You'll kind of you get it. L. Ik. Same thing. Ik means star, and Chua means black. In Yucatan, Mayan. Floyd Hayes the Third reports that among many of. Wait a minute. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. I had to check, check make sure I turned the thing on. All right. Floyd Hayes III reports that among many of the Indians of Guatemala, the Black Christ is referred to in primitive. I'm sorry, referred to in private as Ichua. So they're saying that's the Jesus figure anyway who Harold Lawrence describes as black and woolly haired and unmistakably Negro. Lawrence adds, direct quote, let me see, let me see. Wait, where is it? Lawrence adds, then it breaks off into a direct quote. From 1962 apparently. An examination of ancient Indian religion yields additional information of the condition of early Africans in the Americas. How are they Africans? I'm just not even going to go there. They're just black people who got to America before America was America. Probably wasn't even calling Africa Africa at the time. <laughs> All right. Several Indian nations, such as the Mayans, Aztecs, and Incas, worship black gods along with other deities, and the Mayan religion particularly exemplifies the high esteem in which these Negroes were held. In Africa and the discovery of America's Leo Weiner, Leo Weiner connects the Mayan god Ichua to the African name, oh, to the African Nama, N-A-M-A, -A, societies of the Malinke and Bambara peoples of West Africa. Uh, period. God M and African medicine man. And then you have this picture of the Yucatan post-classic Maya as God M. Modern rendering of God M based on Codex Mandrake. So that's the God simply just pronounced M. And if that's him, then I think we just saw him. I think we just saw this homeboy. That's as big as I can get it. But you see him? That looks like the same homeboy. So anyway.
a cure may have been based on older black gods known to us only as god m god m is represented throughout the ancient codex as a black guy specifically an old man with a toothless jaw or one tooth he do look like he kind of doing the homeboy in my top left corner he look like he kind of doing the The old man toothless thing. Y'all see it. <laughs> he kind of looked like he gumming it. <laughs> so I don't know. He appears to be a traitor, often shown carrying goods on his head. There's stuff on his head. Oh, and he's holding a big cup, so I don't know. I have to judge that one. Uh, images of him suggest that he was also somehow related to beekeeping. What's so special about bees, this is going to go to Egypt. It has to. Bees, Egypt, it's going to do it. I'm just guessing. What's so special about bees? Pl plenty. It's known that ancient Mexicans kept bees. Okay, never mind. Their specific breed typically produced irregular honeycombs with cells having three to six sides. Yeah, I guess the honeycomb is normally like a, a box of some sort, you know. Like if this was a honeycomb, it would be honey on side A and honey on side B. But I guess they have different honey. Or a particular irregular bee that makes a special honeycomb. So, that's cool. Um, so most of the Mayan manuscripts feature honeycombs having four sides, short of the perfection found in the hexagonal six side honeycombs of Africa okay this is this is why it's important to note as Shelehas does that the black god M is only shown holding hexagonal honeycombs these are African honeycombs still not sure why bees are imported in, oh, are you still not sure why bees are important? So what they're saying is if you see a codex picture of a dude holding a, uh, was it an eight-sided honeycomb compared to a six-sided honeycomb? I wonder if I can find that. Then that's proof of journey and connection and like we already know, we've been here since pimping been pimping. <laughs> I'm stupid. stupid. Alright. All right. So we're looking for... I think this is Mayan, right? Yep, Mayan. See what happens. I like that piano. If you wonder why I'm acting stupid over here. All right. Is this homeboy? I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> oh, nope, nope, nope. If y'all could see honeycombs, y'all tell me at one point, at what point in this video is like, bro, your hand was right over it. Your hand was right over it. And that piano is hot. I 
I don't know. No. Like this dude sacrificing the chicken. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm gonna quit. Couldn't find the honeycomb guy. If you ever see the honeycomb guy, count the sides of the honeycomb. If you see six. All right. In volume three of Africa and the Discovery of America, Wiener remarks on the significance of the honeycomb, of the honey bee, among the Malinkis and Bambaras of West Africa and their Nama societies, noting that their chief medicine was made from honey. Kitty cat, what you doing by my feet? Uh, made from honey. Thus, their healers lived in huts made to resemble beehives. Dope, dope. Wiener says their reverence for the bee can be traced back to the Quran, where it is written. I don't know about this. Information. But at the same time, propaganda. <laughs> you know, that's why you got to search it out yourself. What's true, what's not. Now, this could actually be in the Quran, but are you trying to say that the original, which we call it? Oh, they were Muslims. They're all Moors. Uh, you know, no, no God of the Hebrews, or back and forth, or no room for the jungle. So no hook, line, and sinker on the fact that they just mentioned the Quran. Just could be happenstance, could be truth. There's a lot of nations over here. Not decline, not denying, nor backing up the claim. I'm sorry. Okay, in the Quran. The Lord spake by inspiration unto the bee, saying, Provide thee houses in the mountains and in the trees, and of those materials wherein men build hives for thee. Then eat of every kind of fruit, and walk in the beaten paths of thy Lord. There, there proceedeth from their bellies a liquor of various color, wherein is a medicine for men. Verily, heroin is a sign unto people herein oh verily herein is a sign unto people who consider here nor there i don't know but i enjoy honey i, I believe it is a med it is a medicine so i ain't gonna argue with it Sorry, I'm spacey today. I, I ain't been reading as much as I should have been. Work has been like that, 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 that. Five to two yesterday, one to ten tonight, all over the place. All right. As we explain in the Hood Health Handbook, honey is indeed a multi-purpose medicine. It's a natural antibiotic, cough suppressant, and does all kinds of other important stuff. Really, that's a, that's the, that's the way you're gonna put it in the book to get me get into your science. Oh yeah, and stuff. Sorry, could have been real. Could have been a little bit better about that. But beyond its medicinal properties, it appears that the bees themselves are symbolic of something greater, and at least for those who consider. Weiner says West Africans like the men like the Malinkis and Barbaras made voyages to the Americas long before Columbus, he identifies many of the Mayan and Aztec gods as being derived from the reverence paid to these black visitors. As he and several other have noted the gods of the Americas are typically gods of medicine and healing trade or music and dance according to these scholars these associates are these associations are based on these traditions introduced by black people now now 
Now, <laughs> all right, I may not be able to find this. You know what? I'm a. <laughs> I'm gonna use myself. Uh, there we go. Uh, volume this volume not the video volume so if you happen to comment is this a good volume or should I do this but this seems like it would be way too loud by the looks on my meter if Spain France England even Russia all 1803 1703 1803 I think it's 1803 but supposedly Jefferson wrote Congress. Terry and fatigue challenge the captain's medic. Canadians? No, sir. I'm happy to report that the remainder of North What was the their trading advantage? Commerce was the rule of thumb. Even the Sioux, the enemy, were given special dispensation. I'm starting to believe medicine. If the planes tried to share the women. The Mandan offered their women for favorable trading or for ritual purposes. The women offering themselves to the men. <clears throat> There's another scene where this custom is going to show important in my opinion. But at the same time now, as far as that custom, would explain the Cherokees today. <laughs> uh, they are quite pale. No disrespect. <laughs> I mean, hey. <laughs> this guy. That they could have whatever it was that Lewis and Clark possessed. Who do you think he is? Sex was Do such a <laughs> normal part of life that to them, it was not a um, degrading thing. In the eyes of many native people, here were men who had magical objects. Here were men who behaved in strange and wonderful ways. And the question now for so many native people was, how do we acquire this power, the power of their objects, the power of their ways? Yeah, yeah. An amazed Mandan chief spit on his fingers and rubbed the black man York's skin. The Indians much astonished at my black servant and calling the big medicine. This nation never saw a black man before. Clark, October 9th, 1804. Now, now. I'm going to get right back to this. <clears throat> As he and several others have noted, the black gods of the Americas are typically gods of medicine and healing, trade or music and dance. According to these scholars, these associations were based upon traditions introduced by black cultures. And from the junk I had read earlier, these are ancient black cultures who've been over here doing their thing since doing their, since being here doing their thing. I seen a movie that said, man, I've been pimping since been pimping, and I phrase way too much crap like that. Man, I've been holding it down since holding it down. Or whatever that means. I don't know. I'm stupid. So that's proof. Lois and Clark documented right there. You know what I'm saying? They wanna they just wanna add in the final sentence, and I really do mean final sentence. I mean wait, 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 wait. 
the Indians much astonished at my black servant and calling the big medicine. This nation never saw a black man before. Last sentence. So making it a point to go out of their way and say, oh, they've never seen a black man. They might not have, but they know of. They were like, I think um, the quote somewhere in there is like, um, oh, Lois and Clark, what y'all doing rolling with homeboy who painted black head to toe in the daytime? You can't trust nobody who wearing black war paint all day. And then they rolled up and like, oh, that's his actual skin. This brother is black. Oh, that's one of the medicine people that we ain't seen in a while. Because, what, it's 1617 in, Chris, in Lois and Clark days? 1617s, maybe 17s more than 16s. So you know what I'm talking about as far as years and dates. Um, uh, 1492. It's a couple of hundred years. You know what I'm saying? That they've been over here capturing Indians and enslaving Indians and having so many Native American tribes disappear due to sickness. How do people of medicine die in a sickness? <laughs> Y'all made them slaves. Took away their time. All right. So now that I've proved that one. Back to the codex. Hard stuff. All right. <clears throat> gotcha. Wainer says of the black face god, I-X-T-L-I-L-T-O-N. Not even going to try to say that for you. Wiener says of the black-faced guy, that guy. You know what, let's find that guy. I-X-T. That's your boy. That's your man to know. All right, so this guy. <laughs> he was a dance guy, just like a medicine, griot. A medicine griot. That word is sticking out in my mind because I think in the Mali, Africa, West Africa, Mali, and somewhere in the cultures that are in there, they have the griot system, and that's like keeping lineage through verbal song or historical song, you know, something like that or whatever. So I just think that's funny that they use that word, and if I'm not mistaken, that's what that word means in the West African culture. So let's see. That he derived from the Nama worship follows from... His use of the black water or the the Appaloosa the black water there we go talk to Alba learn the language which refers to the honeyed drink used in medicine. Okay, so that's something else. But, um, yeah, self-explanatory, that's what it means. Perhaps some of these black gods were revered for introducing a treasured medicine made from West African honey. In addition to God M, there's also another black god in the manuscripts known as God L. Paul Shilahas calls him the old black guy. Not much more is known about his significance as Shilehas explains. The significance of God L does not God L. What are we doing here? What are we talking about here? <laughs> All right. The significance of God L does not appear from the few pictures which are given of him in Dr. 4-6-B and in, in, in DR 4-6-B Is that the way they got the codexes separated and labeled and junk like that? I mean, is that the numbering system? The God is pictured armed and in warlike attitude 
both in DR14B and 14C, he wears a, bl a bird on his head and has a cane in his hand. Don't get the wrong idea about the warrior character of these guys. They didn't come only to bring war, they came to do trade, but as Shalahas. Oh, two L's in Spanish is a Y. I'm messing this dude's name up. Shahias. I don't know, I might be messing it up even worse now. S C H E L L H A S. Anyway. Notes about God M, the traveling merchant must of course be armed to ward off hostile attacks. God L is also portrayed smoking some kind of cigar, often associated with shamans. Many of these black gods wear headdresses made to look like birds. I literally could look up some uh, South American and Polynesian Negro tribes that are killing little bitty birds to make their ceremonial let me attract a female dance outfits. Straight up. But anyway. Um, just as we find among the black gods of Egypt, at least one of these black gods is depicted carrying a spear. In the myths of Mexico and Peru, Lewis Spence says God L may have been related to another black god of the Americans, Voltan, or to the black Aztec god, Tepeyot. That's our. The Mayan priest Frederick Patterson, in his 1959 work ancient mexico remarked progress of man in mexico i'm sorry <laughs> we can trace the slow progress of man in mexico without noting any definite old world influence during the period of 1000 through 650 bc except possibly a strong negroid substratum connected with the magicians the magicians may have, that really says magicians, the magicians may have been West Africans who traveled to Mexico or a class of black people who could only marry among themselves effectively preserving the African phenotype over untold generations. This reverence for black people may have something to do with the many Native Americans, including the Mayans respected enslaved Africans and revered black gods that represented the principles of healing and good fortune. Later, when the influx of black people decreased, many Mesoamerican priests began painting themselves black to continue the tradition, which continues today, but it didn't begin with black body paint, it began with black skin. Although Fred Patterson later denied his claims about a black presence in Mexico, there's now plenty of evidence to prove it. In part two of When the World Was Black, we denote several pages to the black priests and shamans depicted by the Mayans in the Bonampak and Zitlon, ah shoot, I'm not getting that, <laughs> murals. Regarding a little known mural in Guatemala that has almost entirely been ignored by mainstream, you know what, let's just type that in, I can't say it, <laughs> I can't say it, uh, that beat going, can't say it, uh, DJ just play it, tell me what you saying, gotta go get up out my way, just a pimp and this cane. Able, no cane. Here I am trying to go and sustain. Can't find the word I'm looking for. Too many words in my face right here, though. All right. <laughs> Beats, man. Thought it was over. Coming in. Cold as winter in October. Got me messed up. What you know? Thought my pay cut. Man, it's low. <laughs> I'm trying to make that freaking dope. See me in the game, man, rocking on my throat. 
I don't need no braids. <laughs> I don't need no dreads. Just go on my head. So tune. I'm glad I couldn't say it, because if I was able to pronounce it good, I wouldn't have typed it in. <laughs> pronounce it well, pronounce it correctly. Who is these peoples? Who is these peoples? Who is these peoples? This has been completely ignored by history and whatever else. Just don't want to give a brother no props. All right. Several pages to the black priest and shamans depicted by the Mayans in the Bonampak and Zultun murals. murals. Regarding a little known mural in Guatemala that has almost entirely been ignored by mainstream research, I write. I don't want to see what you wrote. I don't even know if I trust you. I'd like to see what somebody else wrote, but whatever, let's do this. And then I found out more. The photographers were initially intentionally leaving out three figures seated behind the scribe. Why? Because they really looked African. In fact, they're painted nearly jet black and are wearing the what archaeologist William Saturno calls headdresses of a sort never before seen in Mayan art. When you see the picture of these headdresses, it's obvious where what they look like. The crowns of Egyptian pharaohs. In the first picture, yeah. And this one I took off, not so much. Well, yeah, uh, what is it, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, as far as the pharaoh hats? Let me see what's going on up here. Man, who's the real Jaguar Paw? <laughs> Apocalypto? Who's the real Jaguar Paw? <laughs> Homeboy got a whole alligator on his head. An alligator head is on Homeboy's head. Or something like that. I don't know no batter people. I don't know a batter mamma jamma. I'm just talking about Shaft. Better shut your mouth. Anyway. <clears throat> Could these black men, hidden from most media reports on the site, be remnants of a Nubian expedition that landed in Central America? Are these three wise men from the East, or did they descend from the Omec? And considering that the scribe is making calculations from the Mayan calendar, what exactly is the role of these seated crowned observers? Did they make the calendar? <laughs> if these three were indeed travelers who came from the east, establishing themselves as men who were qualified to supervise the calculations of the Mayan calendar, would they not have been seen as living gods? Would they later become revered as gods like Ekchua? There's more to this mural, I continue. And there's yet another hidden figure. This one hidden behind the artists themselves. Older brother Obsidian, who may be a king, has more of the classic Native American features and is a shade of lighter brown looking like Mayans today. But behind him, a dark-skinned male is seated mostly concealed by the throne. It looks like a scene from The Wizard of Oz with the man in the back manipulating the arms of the figure in the front. What picture is that? <laughs> Alright. Looking for a throne with somebody behind the throne. Throne with somebody behind the throne. Probably ain't gonna find the throne. I don't know. I 
kind of look like somebody sitting down. But everybody looks dark, so I'm looking for something when everybody don't look dark. Homeboy in the corner got the lips and everything. You can say what you want about mixed breed and whatever else in one side or the other, but homeboy over here looking like dynamite. Good times! <laughs> I heard that echo. <laughs> Alright, that's picture. I'm done with picture time. Let <clears throat> me finish this. If there weren't enough. A rod above this part of the mural was once used to hang a certain which could a curtain which could conceal or reveal the dark skinned man behind the throne. What does all this mean? Well shoot, I ain't gonna lie. That already got me thinking about the fact that they say um it wasn't the Pharaoh who really ruled Egypt but the priest behind him. So, if they playing those games already, like in South America, you know, like, hey, I'm a brother, you know, they, they like black people, but they don't like black people. I'm going to hide behind this curtain. Oh, yeah, raise your taxes. <laughs> we might need to prepare for the next harvest. <laughs> I'm not really here. <laughs> oh, politics and bullshit. What does it prove and what more lays hidden? According to Saturno, I'm going to just be jacking up names. It looks like Saturn, no. Although the XULTUN site was first discovered in 1915, less than 0.1% of it has been even explored. They don't want to find us. They don't want to know my past. <laughs> Um, man, that's enough for today. I don't know what time it is. We've been doing this for 47 minutes. It's all good. I got. I just got to get my mind right before work. So, I had fun with y'all. We're going to jump back on 144, 12 times 12, if I'm not mistaken. And we'll get back on to, I guess that was all Mayan guys. We're about to get into some Aztec guys. So, these are about to be Aztec. It's fine here. I ain't doing nothing over here. All right, so I can go over here. Two screens of the shit. I ain't even got to close that to do this. Austin Scott, y'all take care.